Okay, now let's do an integral where we have an exponential and a trig function multiplied by each other. We have uh, e to the minus t multiplied by the sine of t. We're trying to find the antiderivative of this. Okay, this is a special um, situation where we end up in a, like a circular type of situation. We're going to first set up integration by parts where, according to the hierarchy, the, the mnemonic, we're at the exponential and trig function level, and it doesn't really matter what we call u and what we call dv. We'll still be able to uh, to work with the uh, the integration by parts formula. The idea, though, is that we can't use the shortcut where we have an, a trig function that's maybe times a polynomial or um, an exponential function that's times a polynomial. That's where the shortcut works. Here, it doesn't work. So just pick one. doesn't matter. But uh, just be consistent with it. And let's, let's choose to let u be the sine of t and dv be e to the negative t. Okay, if we do that, then we have to take the derivative of the, the u term and the integral of the dv term. So just to keep hammer that point home, we'll put a d above this and an i above this. So what is the derivative of sine t? It's cosine t. What is the integral of e to the negative t? It's going to be negative e to the negative t. Remember, the, um, the integral of e to the kt is 1 over k e to the kt. So that when we um, have a negative 1 up there, there's going to be a negative 1 outside. Okay, great. So what do we do with this? Well, we then set up the formula for integration by parts. We have u times v. That's these two parts, u times v. And then we have minus the integral of v du. So here's the v, here's the du. And so minus the minus makes this a plus. Okay. And so I didn't I didn't write it down as minus minus, but I could though. So um, this guy is a negative, and the formula has a negative, and so it becomes a plus. So what do we do? We trade it in e to the negative t sine t for the integral of basically e to the negative t cosine t. It doesn't seem like we've gotten anywhere. Okay. So, um, the integral of u dv is going to be uv minus the integral of v du, just applying the formula, integration by parts. Okay, well then, let's see what happens if we do it again. We should expect that we're going to get back to where we started at. So let's work with this one here. It's a positive e to the, it's a positive um, e to the negative t. And so, let's do it again, where we set up this all over again, letting u be cosine t this time, and letting dv be the e to the negative t again. Take the derivative of the cosine, and take the integral, once again, of e to the negative t. So, cosine's derivative is negative sine of t, and once again, dv's integral, uh, e to the negative t's integral is negative e to the negative t. And so we go through the process again. We multiply u times v. So here's the cosine t and the e to the negative t with a negative on it. That's this part. And then we minus the integral of e to the um, the v times du. Now watch this now. There are um, one, two, three minuses. Um, when we go to set up the integration by parts formula the second time through, this is our uv and then minus the integral of v du. Um, both the v and the du have a negative in them. So I'm not putting the negatives on there, but the, they cancel each other out. But this third negative from the formula then takes uh, and precedence. And so... Um, we then have um, these two. And so let's take a, a good look at where we're at. We started with e to the negative t sine t, the integral of that. And now we're looking at that same thing. 
e to the negative t sine t. And so what's the deal with this? Let's, let's uh, take a step back. So I'm trying to integrate e to the negative t sine t. Now, there's two parts, um, and I want to forget about this other part that we had here. We had this other part um, from the first uv. So that gets, that's going to basically get carried down right here. And then we have this part from the, um, from the second integration by parts that didn't have an integral on it. That gets carried down here. And then here's the integral. Let's, uh, let's just talk about that. We traded in an integral for an integral that we have. So we have e to the negative t sine t, trying to integrate. And here it is again on this side, either the negative t sine t. But they don't cancel out. What happens is that we're going to solve, solve this as basically an algebra question from, from here on out. So if I add it over to the other side, then all of a sudden I have two of them. But these other parts don't have an integral on it. And so then it's just a matter of the, the, what I'm trying to solve for then we'll just be um, just divide by two and we'd have our answer because because um, my goal is to find out what this is and there's no integrals on the other side here I have what twice it is and so if I divide by two I'll have what it is okay and so it's this circular argument you start it with um, e and sine, e to negative t sine t, you traded it in for e to negative cosine t, you did it again, that traded you back to where you started at, but then you can just add over and um, solve it from there. Okay, so that's the, uh, the circular argument that happens when you have an exponential and a sine or cosine mixed together.